last weekend's matchup between the Kansas City Current and the Washington Spirit was a huge one for me because I'm still trying to understand if this transitional style of offense is going to dominate once we get into the playoffs and its knockout matches. You would think a 3-0 win would be resounding enough, but I'm, I'm still not convinced. The only thing I am convinced of at this point is that Kansas City has a great roster. One of those players is Michelle Cooper. I have cut all of her touches into this video for us to watch together, so for all intents and purposes, this is the Michelle Cooper show. Here's Kansas City's lineup. We're going to be focused on Michelle Cooper, who is playing as the right winger. I'll mark her for a couple of these clips, number 17 on the right wing here, and a lot of what we're going to be watching is the work that she's doing on the, the right wing, Spirit's left wing, it's preventative. So we see her right now positioning herself between Hirschfeld and Kruger in preparation for what's coming next, and maybe overcommits there a little bit on that pressing cue. So now we're seeing a big gap of space between Rodman and Kruger, and, and luckily they just didn't play that well, but that was potentially the first kind of hole that opened up for Washington Spirit. The next time we see Michelle Cooper, it's about a minute later, and it's actually what she doesn't do in this clip, right? So she comes low, doesn't touch the ball. That brings Kruger down with her, vacates the space above her, Dubinia can get in there, and uses that to play a long ball to Michelle Prince. This whole sequence breaks very quickly, and we're already starting to get a sense that Kansas City likes these quick breaking plays. Quick breaking plays. We're gonna get a throw here, and we actually see Cooper come all the way across. So to me, she's quite far out of position, and when she goes for this ball, she really does need to win it. So good thing that she does. So now we're gonna see what a little bit of momentum does. We saw Michelle Cooper pick up some individual momentum on the play, but also maybe a little bit of team momentum here, seeing your goalkeeper get out of that kind of sticky situation. Now the ball is going to get played to Michelle Cooper. We're going to see her pop up now and look how wide she is. She doesn't need to come out for this ball at all. She's already ready to break inside. Two moves on Kruger there before she plays the pass. Really, really nice. Now what does it for me it's the, the timing of when she initiates those cuts. The first one, she doesn't get a ton of separation from Kruger, but this here, she waits until there's, I don't know, maybe a couple inches between them, draws Kruger in as tight as possible, then she makes a big move. Not long later, and we're going to see another long play breaking down the right. Oh, no, just fake out. It's on the left side this time. So that's the benefit, right, of making the consistent run at a consistent speed to a consistent location. This play here was a tactical foul from Cooper. I think a smart one because her and Labonta were both out of position. Great recognition there, quick decision making. And man, Washington Spirit, I get wanting to play fast, but arguing with the ref, they just consistently killed their momentum. Here we see Cooper kind of setting the edge of the shape does a nice job not coming too wide, not going too central. And you really see she's not doing a lot. It's just based on positioning that she's cutting off those passing lanes. Here she gets involved in a little bit of set piece defense, so she comes out a little bit wider, starts tracking back though towards that defensive position we saw her in earlier. Never wants to be too far away from that sort of resting defensive position. And here we're going to see she doesn't really do anything. It's just about being ready for what comes next and kind of preventing options. Here to support the throw. Header doesn't really go anywhere. Kind of fighting for this ball. So we're, we're seeing a link between the, the quality of the passes and the quality of the play. We make a poor pass, we have a poor play that comes out of it. Kind of back to the resting defensive position now, and this time she is going to play Kruger a little bit. I think that's because Kruger's in a weak position and she saw that she had no passing option. Okay, there's a little fight for this ball here in transition. Kansas City Current going to come up with it, and then we're going to see Michelle Cooper on the right wing. Same run, same positioning, same intensity, same pass, and we're going to see later what that consistency can create for us. Here's what happens when things go differently. We see Michelle Cooper still in that same wide position, but the pass, very different, and it almost looks like your teammates weren't expecting that. We're looking for that same consistency. This one here, we're joining Kansas City when they're trying to clear the ball out. Washington Spirit really still trying to stay on the attack. We see Michelle Cooper in her defensive position, but when Kansas City do regain the ball, there's not time for her to really get into a good offensive position. So what she does, 
just sends the ball back sensibly, knowing what the team is looking for. And what do we think the team is looking for? Well, they like those long, fast breaks. This one is actually to Dabinia, so now we're starting to see, hey, there's some consistency in where this ball is played, but things are happening differently, which then creates a new problem for the team to solve. Cooper sends this one in. We're starting, we're starting to see the cogs turn here. We've, we've established some consistency. Now we're changing things up. We saw that maybe this change hasn't been super successful. We've had to go recycle the ball. And now I'm starting to get a sense that Kansas City, they really need these fast breaks. This is what they're built on. And this recycle hasn't really gone that well for them. So maybe, maybe Kansas City loses a little bit of momentum there. What do you do to bring momentum back as a team, as a player? Well, just execute the plays you can execute. Nice little one there to put that out for a set piece where the spirit will not looking good. And then this, I think, is a very fine tackle to just dispossess Lacey Santos by changing foot at the last minute. Really liked that one. And then here, we're going to see a little bit of choppiness, potential transition opportunity for the spirit. And we see Cooper really shut that down and prevent that ball going. What happens when a team have a bit of momentum? Well, they could be a bit more confident. Try something like this, just a ball straight over to Chewinga. She very, very nearly gets that as well, so why not? Now Michelle Cooper perhaps overcommits a little bit there, and, and she knows she's beat here, but the consistency for the run back, not panicking, just making sure she gets into her position quickly. Really liked that one. This clip sets up very similarly to the one we looked at where uh, the pass goes out to Dabinia, but this time it comes into Cooper, who, who can't turn, struggles to get the ball upfield, and we're starting to see now if Cooper is your, your option to get the ball turned and moving upfield, when we see some other players do that, the execution is just not quite as clean. We're going to see on Mesa's ball here. It's close, but it's it's just off rejoining Cooper in her defensive position and she does just such a nice job setting her position anticipating moving right into this this fast run here and we think maybe she's going to go to the same spot she's done before uses that to kind of fake out Hirschfeld a little bit but I just felt every time this ball went to the left for Kansas City they just did not look as crisp Eey. Washington Spirit now have a restart from very deep in their defensive zone and so Michelle Cooper is in the correct space but it gives her a little bit of freedom here by being higher up on the pitch to kind of just read that and go inside that was a great great interception really intelligent interception right there once you got a little bit of momentum that's when the confidence comes in you start making crazy plays like this that is a huge step good pressure really initiates whole sequence here doesn't even matter that spirit get the throw because she's just gonna continue doing the same thing and that one was actually a foul. But, you know, sometimes e even when you foul, there can be benefits in it. Just a minute later and things are going to play out so differently. So very aggressive press again from Cooper and maybe a little bit of fear from a foul before. Kruger sends a, a bad ball backwards. Prince, aggressive on the press, jumps on that one. Now, I had to pause here. This is my favorite run in all of football, what Labonta and Cooper do there. I say it's so beautiful whenever it works out. Also really good from Cooper to understand that Labonta had the momentum, lets her play into that. Now Labonta solving for their problem here, we're seeing this team look not quite as effective about the fast break, so what does she do? Kind of induces it a little bit herself and gets a lovely, lovely goal out of it. I do not think this Sally is going to catch on, I, I have to say. Great Sally, but uh, it's not for everyone. There's a few things that were really nicely done on this goal collectively, but I want to break down. So the first is the consistency of the run from Cooper in terms of positioning herself there, intensity of that run. It forces Rodman to respect her as an option and then creates a crossover and coverage, right, as, as Kruger picks up Labonta. And then the next thing that I think is really clever is the way that Levanta just dribbles that line knowing that there probably isn't going to be a stepping cue for one of the defenders. And you can listen to Levanta talk about this herself. Nobody's going to step to me, so I'm just going to shoot. I think they're worried. I mean, our front line is unreal. Our 10 is unreal. So they're probably all worried about them. It's too easy. Now, at this point in the game, I felt Washington really did start to fight back a little bit. So we see Cooper lose out on the header there. Kansas City just happened to wildly clear this ball to nowhere. Spirit were trying. 
it, it just, I don't know, it just was not happening for them. Cooper allowed to do her defensive job really high up on the pitch. I don't know how Spirit um, allowed themselves to, to start fighting that battle over there. Now look again, the consistency of the run from Cooper. Same wide spot, same pace. Even if she's not getting the ball, she's still making it 42 minutes into the game. And here's another one. Same run. You know, maybe we're losing steam a little bit, but shes it's not for lack of trying at all. As we watch one individual player's game, right, we, we realize nobody's perfect. Doesn't matter how good of a game you're having, you're, you're still going to make bad plays. But the key is she just picks herself up quickly here. She's not bothered by it. It doesn't get in her head. And you can see the calmness on, on this clip because she's in the same spot, but it doesn't change how she plays this at all. She just does what she has been doing all game, what's been working. Great. I don't, I don't know if you can call that a tackle or a block, but whatever it is, she is annoying the Washington spirit at this point. They are very frustrated. <laughs> And here's what that frustration looks like on Kruger. Probably could have run here, but sends off an, a not great pass because she doesn't want to engage with Cooper. We're rejoining at the half. I'm just going to mark Michelle Cooper up so you can get used to her being on your far side of the screen, even though she's playing in the same position. In this clip, Spirit aren't able to clear their defensive third quick enough, which lets Michelle Cooper be very aggressive, come in, make that tackle. I love the cut there. I love a cut from staying still. And then the consistency of the service, that looks very much like the first ball played in. Over here, we're, we're joining for a little a bouncy competitive ball. Michelle Cooper, patient, wins that one, but it's the decision-making here gets me. That doesn't look like the majority of the passes we've seen her make, right? Most of her passes have been progressive passes. That one goes a little bit sideways. Here's another example where the pass is, is not that great. We see her kind of standing still, choosing not to come to that ball. Not the best pass back. And I, I feel like I'm kind of seeing a trend where when her passes aren't great, they're not those kind of progressive upfield passes that we're used to seeing. The whole rest of the play kind of declines. And we actually see the Washington Spirit get a pretty decent play out of this in the space where Michelle Cooper isn't. One of their better chances. So we got to remember Michelle Cooper coming back from injury. She probably knows going into this game exactly how many minutes she's going to be playing. And I think at this point, now, now we can start to see maybe a tiredness settling in. Mace asks her to play back. She says, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> this pass isn't isn't that bad, but I get the sense it's, it's not what the team's looking for. I think there is a huge difference between conserving energy and lack of effort, and I think what we've seen in these last five or so minutes from Michelle Cooper is more around conserving energy, and she's going to prove this point when this ball transitions here. It's not lack of effort because she knows she's out of position. She starts hustling back. She realizes how bad this break can be, understands they're 2-0 they're up, so maybe on the attacking side she can ease off a little bit. And that's the last play we're going to see from Michelle Cooper, subbed off at 58 minutes, and I, I imagine that was probably the plan coming back from injury. How do they look without Michelle Cooper? Well, I, I think fine. They do a little bit of retooling on the sub, so Ball, who comes in, takes a defensive spot, and they send Wheeler over instead uh, to take Cooper's position. And, you know, this play is one that Ball gets involved in. Looks fine to me. Looks absolutely fine to me. So the other thing I could have done with this video, I very easily could have called this the Lola Bonta show. Girl had herself an absolute game. She's just such a phenomenal player. I mean, the, the run there, the pass, I love it. Every week feels like it could be the, the Tem Wichawinga show, so we, we got to let somebody else in on the fun a little bit. I love this pass from Dabinia here. Don't even bother going for goal. Just go for the sure thing. It's great, but the, the low Levanta pass for me makes that one. And, you know, go back, watch film again, and you're going to see Lowe involved in, in almost every, every good play that happened. Such a great player. Of course, there was still some drama in this game. Washington spirit, things go from bad to worse. And girl, I cannot with the putting the ball in the net after the whistle. It just is so bad. It's so bad. So, uh... Spirit fans, I feel for you. I, I really, truly do, because this is, is not a... Words are hard right now. Um, sorry. <laughs> That's all I got right now. If you want to see touch cuts for different players, let me know who you're interested in following. Gotta hope they have a good game to back that up, too, though. 
And you know, if you prefer the kind of extended highlights that follow more of the highs and lows of the game, let me know too. I feel like I'm kind of just coming coming back to YouTube and, and figuring out how to start this all over again. So all feedback is good feedback. Appreciate your time and I'll, I'll see you again for next one.